we're down at Bluebell Lakes and uh, we're on Mallard, which is the first lake you come to as you come in the gate on the right hand side. It's the bigger lake on the complex. And there's a few fish in here and hopefully we're going to get stuck into a few. I've just had one as well, the first fish of the session. Now, I was meant to be turning up this morning. However, um, I was at home yesterday and I was uh, chomping at the bit to get out. Now we're all allowed back out night fishing. So I slid up here a night early. Um, and yeah, seen a couple of fish show. Got the rods out um, just on darkness last night. Put a bit of bait out as well. And uh, yeah, typical sort of first light bite this morning. And we've had one nice little scaly mirror that we're going to have a look at in a minute. It's just resting in the net. And uh, yeah, perfect. Great to be out. Great to be out fishing. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get a few more. Certainly looking promising. The fish are fairly active. They're showing. Um, it is still pretty cold. Uh, if you've been out fishing yourself recently, you'll know that sort of it has been pretty horrendous. There's been snow about and cold northerlies and north easterlies and just just horrible weather to be fishing in, you know. But nonetheless, the uh, the fish are starting to wake up now and uh, and they're starting to have a feed and that's what we're here for. And yeah, hopefully we can do some proper bait fishing, get a few bites and. Uh, and get a few fish. There's some lovely fish in here. There's actually, um, I think, three fish that are over forty-seven pound in here. Um, so there's a chance, you know, they're in there. They're swimming about. I'm not saying we're going to catch one, but if you're here and you're fishing, there's always a chance. It only takes one bite sometimes. But there's some great, you know, there's some great thirty-pounders. A lot of mid thirty-pounders. A lot of twenties. There's a lot of doubles as well. It's quite a, um, quite a. Stock venue, I think there's around 1,800 to 2,000 fish in here. A lot of them seem to be sort of 18 pound-ish, like your average stamp with, you know, some good 20s. Um, lad down the bank had a lovely 25 pounder this morning, real big apple slice scales. Uh, I mean, so if we can get, you know, get in amongst a couple of those, it'd be absolutely lovely. But yeah, so I'm going to have a cup of tea, get this fish sorted. And we'll be... Uh, on the way, hopefully get a few more. Well, that didn't last long. Um, we just put the kettle on. Just sorting, you know, the stuff out ready to uh, just have a look at that fish. And the rod that I've just chucked back out, the middle rod is just literally just gone again. And we've got another one, just like that. So obviously the bait's working pretty uh, pretty good already. And in textbook fashion, what we'll do is we'll get this one in and have a look at exactly how we're doing it. Wow, <laughs> we just put one of those fish back and it's like same thing again. Middle rod, it's gone again. Third bite in probably not even 20 minutes. Yeah, ideal. Not seen anything show, they're just there. Uh, I did just chuck a spot out, that's why I got my finger stool on. I thought oh, I'd just chuck a spot out. You know, I was gonna put three out, but I never even got the spot back in and the middle rod had gone. Yeah, lovely, really nice. Nice to be out, sun's out now as well. Perfect. The wind spun a little bit. It was sort of like in my face, but now it's sl slung from like left to right. But I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. Yeah, happy days. There you go. That's the first one in the morning. 
What a treat as well. Lovely looking carp this. It's quite a, you know, quite a typical fish really, which is absolute beaut. Nice scaly one. Yeah, lovely. Obviously we've got that other fish in the net as well. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll slip this, slip this one back. Yeah, happy days. Well, there you go. That's the third one. Yeah, nice. Nice to get three bites in quick succession over the bait. That's what bait fishing's all about, really. Like three on a spot, drumming a bit of bait in, trying to get something going. You know, and it's turning out perfect. That's working exactly how I hoped it would. Um, yeah, and you need some, you know, you need the right bait to do that. The water's fairly deep where we're fishing. It's quite windy. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll get this one back and then we can have a look at sort of what bait that, you know, the bait that I would use typically to fish a lake like this, you know, to get a few bites, string them together and that, and uh, exactly like what rigs and stuff you'd put over the top. Yeah, might have a cup of tea first though. Whoa. Right, so after um, chucking the rods back out, I topped up the spot uh, and actually used up what I had left in the bucket. So I'm just gonna knock up another spot mix. And um, like this time of year, fishing like venues that I'm fishing now, like the fish are just waking up, you know, they're looking, they're actually looking for like some nutritional food. Um, not only that, the water's quite deep. It's pretty windy, like where we are in a big crosswind. So I don't want a load of tut that's just going to like wash off down the, you know, like a load of powdered up bits that are just going to wash off out me peg. I want some proper food that when it goes in in the spawn, it's going to be in, down on the deck, and I can get my rigs fishing like right over the top of it like really well. Um, that in mind, I'm, you know, I do like using small baits as well. So basically, I base my mix around like I've got some eight millers at the moment. Um, when the water warms up, give it another sort of month or so. And I'll be using like 12s and 15s, but um, it is still, you know, fairly cold. So I've got some eight mil bug, you know, and that is perfect. Now, if I use bigger baits, sometimes I'll soak them. I'd feel with like the eight millers, you don't really need to because they're so small. They're pretty soft anyway. And it takes literally a few hours in the lake. All the goodness comes out the bait. You know, it starts leaking off all that traction and the water can pull through the bait really, really quickly. Um, so we've got some eight mil in there. And then what I do is I mix them about sort of three to one with the 12s and then some 12 mil bug. You can like just, if you want to, you can just crack the odd handful just to, you know, just to give it something, break a few baits up and that. Um, and then this time of year, like with the fish waking up, looking for nutritional value, like you can't go wrong with putting some pellets in and especially venues like this that see some regular fish being stocked, you know, they're born and raised on pellets. They'll never like, they'll never put you fast dead from like, you know, doing all right. Um, and I've just got the matching boily pellet basically. So I've just got the bug, the bug pellets. I can just dop a few handfuls in there. You can, these are four mils, these ones. So you can't really, you couldn't really put enough of them in to be fair. Um, and you know, I want to be fishing over like quite a considerable amount of bait as well. You know, I'm not just going to put like 10 spots out. I'm going to put this whole bucket out, um, tonight. I put best part of a bucket out last night, you know, when I got here on darkness and I think that with these big lakes, especially out here, there's not a lot of weed this time of year and your bait is the key feature and when you're trying to sort of like, well, you look at, the, you know, like we've had three bites in quick succession this morning, and that's because you've got a concentrated area of bait with three rods on it to get that sort of impact. If you had a rod here and a rod there, and 
you know, the fish come over just the one rod, you'll get one bite, they'll move off and that'll be it. But by fishing this way, you'll maximise your chances of getting a few bites and especially because of the nature of the water, like these fish, they do shoal up, you can actively see them showing and they, they just move around in, like in big groups. One minute they're on you, you catch a load, then they're off you for a few hours and then they might drift back over you. And it's, it's just the way it is. And it's, you know, it's, it's just a good way to fish these waters. And um, like with this bait now, so I'm gonna stick a bit of hemp and a bit of sweet corn with it as well. The hemp is summit and nothing, keeps the carp grubbing around. You know, it's a brilliant carp attractor, fills the little voids in when you're spotting, fills the little voids in between the baits and that in the spawn, gives you a bit of extra casting weight as well, which is good in this sort of wind. And then you can't go wrong fishing a gravel pit with just chucking a few handfuls of corn in there as well. And then I'm not gonna stick loads of corn in because it's fairly quiet with not many anglers fishing at the moment. I don't want, I don't want to attract like too many birds to the spot, you know, if the carp aren't there and with the sort of visual of the water. I don't want lo loads of tufties or loads of coots on me. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of corn and some hemp. You can't like, you can't go wrong with sticking a bit of fresh hemp with it. And then, so basically when you knock all that up, look at that. You know, that is a perfect mix for fishing this sort of lake. You know, you've got all different sort of variant sizes of food. You've got different food signals coming off, bit of color as well. Perfect to chuck a few different sort of color up baits over the top. And uh, the only thing left to do is literally tank a bit of, I've got a bit of bug food liquid. I'm not gonna put this out for a couple of hours. So what I'm gonna do is put the food liquid in and then that can just soak into all the pellets start soaking into the boilies. Don't need a lot of it because it's a bit more concentrated than the, um, the spod syrup. But I don't put the spod syrup in now. I'll put that in when I'm actually spotting because that's quite a thicker, gloopy liquid that will actually sink. It won't just dissolve, like, you know, when the spawn goes in, it won't just sort of like disperse as it goes in. It's actually like a liquid that will actually sink down and it sort of like stains the bottom, if you know what I mean. Like once it's on the bottom, just breaks up and then when them fish come in on the spot and they start nudging about all the attraction just puffs up then it's like you know it works really really well and um and yeah so that's ready to go i'll chuck that in me uh in me little spot stand over there let that soak in for a bit and then when we actually come to put the bait out we'll have another look then about how we go about putting the uh the spot syrup in the spot when it goes out Right, so the rigs for the session, I'm going to keep it dead simple. You know, we're bait fishing. I want a nice anti-tangle rig. I don't need anything like PVA wise because we're, you know, because we're spawning, I don't need any PVA. So I'm just going for a straight leg clip set up, little fluorocarbon at length to like a little bin of Ronnie type set up on that. I got a little 12 mil PB pop up on as a hook bait. Four ounce lead, obviously fishing in a side wind. So I want a, you know, nice, decent lead to get out to the spot at the clip nice. The complicated bit to this sort of fishing is just being tidy, just fishing and, you know, fishing a nice spot, drumming it down the same hole every time, getting your rods nice and tight over your bait. Um, and, you know, that is, I say that's all there is to it. Obviously, you know, you need to do it at a range that you're comfortable at doing it at. There's no good, say, fishing at, 30 rod lengths if you're going to bladder it here there and everywhere when you could fish at say 24 25 rod lengths and you know fish it on a dustbin lid um and, and that's the key to bait fishing we're fishing 13 14 foot water out there so when the bait goes down it's naturally going to spread out a little bit anyway so you want to keep it as tight if your spotting's nice and tight you're still going to get plenty of spread but try and drum it down the same hole all the time um yeah, you don't need anything fancy rig-wise just because of the nature of the fishing. Once they're in, you know, the effectiveness is the baited area. 
that's what you're like you're, you know that's what you're trying to create you're trying to get a competition for food um, and that's how you can accumulate like multiple bites um, like how we did this morning we had three bites really quickly and that is just a really typical sort of flurry of activity when you're bait fishing it can be sort of like full on and you know the last thing you want to be doing is messing about with like pva bags and stuff like that um when you're going to get that you know that quick flurry of activity and another thing i do as well is i mark up my rods with elastics which what we'll do is we'll have a look at doing that as well um just so you're not re-wrapping your rod around your sticks all the time so as you work a fish you know there's plenty of water out there and they're not going anywhere um, you can just pop their line in the clip and then you're clipped up ready to chuck back out. But yeah, that is the rig. So I'm going to get a few of these ready now, just so I've got a few spare rigs, just in case it kicks off a bit. But it's, uh, it has gone pretty cold at the moment. Well, I've had to put my coat on. It's, we had a little bit of hail, a little bit of snow. And uh, yeah, certainly not, uh, not the weather I was hoping for, for this time of year, but nonetheless... But yeah, I'll get the uh, get the rigs ready, and then we'll have a look at putting some more bait out. I think topping the spot up whilst it's gone a bit quiet, and then hopefully we'll uh, maybe get an afternoon bite or something. Right, well, um, I was just saying that it's like looking a bit quiet and that, and um, the reason why, well, basically, I've been fishing here, I slotted in here last night, and uh, I did have my eye on a peg, a couple of pegs up, sort of ran on this bend looking out at a different part of the lake, um, and the fish, even though I caught this morning, the fish have, they stopped showing up there, and I, I was wondering if they'd moved and I was holding back on putting that bait out just on the whim. It was like I wasn't sure where the sort of like the shoal of fish had gone. Um, obviously, I couldn't move before because there's quite a lot of people here, but it's cleared out a little bit today. And um, a swim's come available up there. And there's, in the last sort of like half an hour, I've probably seen 20 fish show up there. So I feel a little bit like a little bit emmed in here, basically, because... I've got blokes either side of me. We're both, like, we're all fishing the same sort of range, even though I've caught. Um, and I've had three fish this morning. Like that just gives me a better option. I've got more water, there's fish showing up there. I'm left alone a little bit. So um, I am actually gonna bite the bullet and move up there. And then, you know, I've got, got a couple of days then, sort of like tonight and all day tomorrow and possibly tomorrow night to uh to get something going up there and that you know that sort of fishing being on them fish the way that i'm fishing fishing this bait and three rods on a spot and that it's you know it is to fish for shoal fish like that so um yeah don't get me wrong it catches fish wherever but like you can accumulate or try and accumulate like a little hit of fish if you're fishing to like the main shoal of fish so um yeah it's you know you can't catch what's not there but I think we've just got a better chance up there. So I'm going to get packed up, get moved up there and um, yeah, get the rods back out just before the evening and we're ready to try and, uh, yeah, try and string a few together.
Well, the day's coming to a bit of a close now. It's not quite dark, but the rain clouds are actually coming over pretty, uh, pretty dark. It looks like it's going to absolutely hammer it down in a minute. Uh, and it's absolutely freezing as well. Um, the wind has done pretty much like a 180 and spun round a bit. I've got the rods all out mint, um, spotted up a new spot. Uh, and yeah, I'm feeling confident to be fair. Seen, you know, seen a good few fish showing. Haven't seen anything since I put the rods out and spotted. So, uh, but I don't think they've gone far. I see one right off to the left. But hopefully, you know, we'll get a few through the night. If not, I'm certainly confident that come the morning time, I think we'll have a, have a little flurry of activity. We're definitely on a few fish here. I can't say that we're not. And uh, yeah, there's sort of, there's nowhere that I'd rather be right now than sort of over this peg or the peg to my left. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Everything's all pretty much set. Just got to uh, get the fish to do their bit now. Hopefully they'll, uh, they'll have a go. I've had a bit of food, we stove the cob on, and uh, yeah, I feel like a vet for about five people now. I haven't looked like it as well. <coughs> but yeah, if we, um, yeah, if we get anything through the night then, or early morning, we'll uh, be the first to let you know. morning that sun is absolutely beautiful now last night well we cooked some food yesterday evening and then um we had a flat out massive hailstorm, literally the size of marbles it was ridiculous and uh, we ducked for cover but it was freezing last night minus five this morning on the temperature um yeah we're just coming up to bite time now so hopefully we should i've seen a, a couple of fish they are off the back of me um but I'm fishing exactly how you know how I want to be fishing, or and how I need, how I think I need to be fishing to get a bite. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed that we get a couple in the same sort of time that we had them yesterday. But we'll see. Well, finally got a bite off the bait. Um, took a little bit longer than what I thought, to be honest. But, I mean, the conditions haven't been great, but just sitting on your hands, knowing that what you've done worked really well, is paid off. You know, if I'd have chopped and changed and done something else, I may not have got the bite. And confidence is always key with carp fishing. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, just sitting tight has come good once again. And that's the beauty about a baited area is that it could just literally rip off at any time. You know, you just don't know. Stay there, Ollie. Don't move, I'll guide him around you. Here he comes. She's in. That's an old call in the common as well. Nearly went over my wellies then. Beauty. You can see just over my shoulder there that we've got that last fish in the net. And um, literally just flicked it back out onto the bait, put the rod down. And it's away again. Different rod. I put the other, you know, put the rod down, clip the bobbin on, and the other one literally just rattled off. And that is that's literally what this sort of bait fishing's all about. And you know, applying a decent, a decent bait, like a decent amount of it. And like we've not really spoke too much of like quantities, but if you're ever in doubt. 
just 20 big spawns to start with is perfect and then you can just top up after each fish anywhere from sort of four to eight big spawns per fish and that is absolutely you know that's absolutely ideal for this sort of fishing where you're getting multiple bites but if you had your rods spread out you know different tactics if you had like i don't know like one on a chod over there one on a bag and you know don't get me wrong bags have their day but um yeah this sort of fishing really does come into its own when you're just trying to muster up a little hit of fish and yeah and it's nice because you can sort of like sit on your hands and like you figure out if you say you're doing a couple of nights or whatever you can figure out the bite time so you know it becomes clear right at the minute it's just all sort of anywhere from nine 9 a.m. onwards, like chatting to a couple of the local anglers, well, not locals, but a couple of lads that have fished up here lately. Just nothing, nothing coming out during the night, and it's just typical. Just typical, sort of same thing to us, really, like nothing through the night. And then just sort of wake up, have a coffee, a little bacon roll, and then get stuck into a few fish. It's just ideal. Yeah. That one in there looks all right as well, probably a 20 pound common. So it's nice. You'll have to excuse me a minute though, I need to go and get my landing net. Go watch me wellies. Yeah boy. Nice, this is the first one of a couple of bites in like real quick succession again. Same as yesterday, and that is exactly what bait fishing's all about. You know, stringing a few bites together on bite time, it's perfect. You know, a nice real positive way of fishing for this time of year. Ideal, this, you know, lovely. Yeah. Lovely, what I'll do is get this one back, get the other one out, and then uh, time to top the spot up. It right, gotta go. This one, um, yeah, second one, I've got another bite. So. Right, well it's kicking off horrible now. going on happy days yeah so this is gone again and you'll notice there's another rod missing off the pad and that's because i've had a double take and uh luckily for me i've got my old mucker next door the trevometer so he's playing the other one for me just to uh yeah so what are friends for eh yeah Nice, good times. You've about wiped me out as well. I've just about wiped Trev out, so I'm going to have to go on a wander a minute. in the uh, few in the nets to sort out now and this is the best of the bunch so far 
lovely 28 and a half pounder certainly on the feed now it's all coming to like coming together nicely that sort of fishing is absolutely brilliant yeah nice really nice <laughs> Right bug for it, these fish, aren't they? <laughs> that too cheesy, Ollie. <laughs> All right, bug for it. going to get some spot out on the spot and you know there's not a better time than to show you exactly what to use and how to use the um the bug spot syrup and it is pretty like you can see it is pretty thick and gloopy you can see how sticky that is it's perfect when that goes in that's going to sink down through the water it's going to get onto the bottom um a bit of it will break up on the way down some of it will get to the bottom. This works absolutely perfect. But when the fish start, when the fish start rummaging round, that'll all like flare up off the bottom. And um, the best way that I found to do it is just literally half load your spod, make a little sort of just a little dent in the middle of your spod. Just put a little lashing of that in there, and then just literally finish loading as you would normal. And then, that way it's too thick to like drip out the bottom. So when you, uh, when you put it inside the bait, inside the spawn, You know, it gives you a beautiful casting weight as well. You know, that's like 24 and a half rod length and it's literally like a flick just because you've got such a nice casting weight. None of the liquid actually sticks inside the spawn or anything like that because it's concealed inside the bait. It just comes out as like a little clump, sinks to the bottom. It's brilliant. You want to use the liquid food for like soaking your boilies. Um, you can either do that do that when you get to your peg or do it the night before whatever you want to do really you can just tailor that to suit don't need loads a bit of bit of warm water and a bit of bug bug food and then just use the syrup use the syrup for uh when you're spawning you get like you know that massively increases the attraction in your peg just because of the nature of it and you can't really the hemp stuck in there then yeah you can't really like overdo it just because like you're never going to like fill them up or overfeed or anything like that just because it's just it's just all smell beautiful so I'm going to do about 500 more of these. <laughs> now I'm going to uh, I'm stick a bit out. Might stick like I don't know four or five kilos out tonight, just because I've got basically I've got nothing to lose. You know I've caught plenty of fish. Um, if I hadn't caught as much, I would definitely like err on the side of caution. Probably just put like 10 or 15, 10 or 15 out. I wouldn't be like filling it in. Um, but basically I've had a good trip, so like I've got nothing to lose. Got a bit of bait in this bucket. So I can tank a bit in, obviously they're up for a bit of a feed. Um, 
yeah, so you just got to sort of judge how much you're putting out bait wise, how much you're actually going to put out as you're fishing. Now, one thing I would say if I was fishing in shallower water, I definitely wouldn't put as much bait out. If I was fishing in, say, like six, eight foot, I would only be putting probably like, I don't know, maybe six to eight to start and then maybe just three after each fish just because of the nature of it. You're fishing a lot more accurately, you know, because your bait's not spreading out. Um, and I've just found that I've just found that the sort of the deeper the water, the more bait you need to make to make a bit of an impact, really. Um, and yeah, it's just you just got to tailor that as you go along. sun's just starting to poke his head up now i've just had a fish before first light as well which is the 17th fish of the trip which is you know that's that's perfect it was exactly what we were looking to show um you know doing some you know doing some cool bait fishing and uh, it's something that i always love doing and you can sort of like you can generate a bit of a you know an accumulation of fish really easy when you get the fundamentals right you know just good solid angling um getting everything in place you still got to be on them to catch them like you know i done that uh done a night in a peg i wasn't due to come that night um and it was busy it was a saturday night uh so i wasn't looking hopeful to get get a decent peg anyway so i moved in the morning got on a few fish and you know the rest as they say is history but the, the fishing's been really really good we fished in a really positive manner which is you know i just love doing that it's, there's nothing better than when you're getting a few few takes off a baited area being able to drum a bit of baiting over the top and uh, yeah just just think about your fishing just where you're going to apply it if you're in slightly shallow water slightly less bait deeper the water you can get away with putting a little bit more bait in um, but yeah yeah what a cool little trip um, I'm going to be heading off shortly I've got some work to do this afternoon and uh, yeah so I'm going to have a slow pack down and then get on the road it's quite a quite a long drive for me to go home so yeah, but I hope you've enjoyed this and you can take something from this and put into your own fishing, but like most of all, as long as you make sure you enjoy it really. And yeah, see you next time.